Hi, it's Jay, and in this video I'm going to be sharing hidden ZBrush features and hotkeys that are going to be useful for you. Let's get started. So the first tip is the gizmo, and if you press one of the buttons, you gotta, you know, you can press the W, E, and R to call the gizmo, and you can switch it off and use the, the kind of a, the old-fashioned um, alternative of the gizmo, which is Transpose Master, which is pretty cool, but now I'm gonna talk about the focal shift of the gizmo. In a default gizmo, you're gonna have minus 100 in focal shift. When you work with the gizmo, you can usually rotate it and you can ch change the shape or the size or you can move in the scene. But if you change the focal shift to, let's say, uh, minus 50, 58 and try to rotate now, and this is gonna affect this kind of area, which is like depending on a focal shift. And now it's not gonna rotate, but it's gonna make a kind of a a shape, interesting shape, and you can make a lot of good patterns out of it. So if you change more into positive, the focal shift is going to decrease even more. So now you're going to like affect uh, even less part than it was. As you see, it's just affecting right here. And if you put positive 100, it's going to be, uh, you know, ineffective. It's not going to work. It's not going to do anything because that focal shift is too small. So, and remember, everything depends on the gizmo, the pivot of the gizmo, the center of the gizmo. So whenever you do uh, something, it always like comes to the center point of the gizmo, right? So if you, let's say, uh, press Alt and rotate it, and if you change the shape, it's gonna run away. It just keeps away from the center. Or even if you move, it just comes into uh, to the center. So you could also add Dynamesh, press Alt, move around again, try to give like interesting shapes, which is pretty useful for making patterns or some kind of uh, interesting like monsters and you can figure out even more other ways to work with. So. That's the first step, and the additional to the first step is uh, when you have a gizmo, and if you want to keep the default settings, and if you want, if you don't want to mess with the default settings, you can press Control, and now it's going to change. Uh, it's like additional uh, gizmo settings, so you don't have to ruin the def default. But if you press Control, now move your focal shift. You're going to have the same. Let's say functions as you as you had from uh, with the first settings. So you can just press Control again and move around. Like go to Control, you're gonna have the default gizmo. And let's say you want to add even more interesting shape to your model. Just take the gizmo and put on the part that you want to rotate. And because you have a less focal shift, it's gonna add even more interesting shape to your model. Let's do more operations with this ZBrush Gizmo feature. Let's make the, the change or the, you know, the yellow box, which is for changing the scale. And because we dropped down the focal shift, now it's gonna uh, make um, only that part, which is the gizmo, uh, the pivot point of the gizmo is close. So press Alt, you can bring it there. And now it's gonna like run away from the center. Let's go to the second hidden feature, which is also, let's call back to Gizmo, and that is inflate, you know, the yellow box, put down to the part where you want to inflate and press control, drag it out, and you can inflate that part. Again, it depends on the focal shift. If you go back to like minus 100, it's gonna inflate the whole model. If you go lower, it's gonna inflate only a smaller part of the model. Press control, minus 45, only to this part, we go like my positive, like almost 90, which is again, inflating. Now I just wanted to show a quick demo of making a little creature using the same techniques that we just learned. The next tip is still gizmo and we got like more hidden features in the gizmo 
and the next is the rectangle as you know it just changed the shape but if you press control and bring it down or you know bring it up it just trims it works like a, as a trimming tool or a trimming brush and the other one is if you press all and try to change the shape it you know it just brings down the shape into the like perfectly symmetrical shape because if you don't press alt and if you press that you just squash the model from from size but if you press alt it just gives the shape and one more hidden feature in gizmo is making copies with the same distance and it works like when you switch on the gizmo and if you press control and then drag any of the arrows of the gizmo to a certain point and this is going to determine the same that this is going to be distance between the copies and then you let go of the control and still keep dragging the arrows so it's going to have multiple copies with the same distance so the next step is about subtle navigation and you have the subtle navigation bar on the right on the subtle sub palette on a tool palette and if you press up and down arrow keys on your keyboard you're going to be moving among your subtools but if you press control and then press up and down arrow keys on your keyboard you're going to be moving selected subtool up and down among the other subtools let's say this is the the model itself and i press control up and down so i'm moving this subtool among the other which is very useful and now let's talk about UI hidden features and shortcuts. And the first is when you hover over to the button or the slider or the functions, you're going to have short information what does the button, slider or the function do. But if you press control, you're going to have full information what does the button, slider or the function do. And the second hidden feature in the UI is opening up the palette when you don't know where that function or the button is located. And usually what we do is we open up the palette and drag it to the right or the left tray to work with and click once again to delete it with the left side button of the mouse or you can drag it and drop to the canvas right but let's say you don't know where the solo is located and you you want to open up the palette to work with or to do more operations with that you just have to go hover over and press alt and click once with the left side button of the mouse and you're going to open up that palette let's say you don't know where the sculptors pro is located right click once with the alt and then click left side button of the mouse and you're going to open up that palette and if you want to close it you don't have to go and drag or click once again you can just alt again click once again to delete that let's say we open up that transform right click once again delete it so you want to open up the brushes click alt and you're going to open up again close it up materials and so on and the third ui hidden feature is going to open up a lot more space in your ui and that is control and left side button of the mouse if you press control and then click here you can scroll it and move sometimes these buttons doesn't fit the line and you can fix that with pressing control and scrolling and you can even add more like functions here right through uh, preferences enable customize and you can add let's say import here and export here and stuff like that now you can like scroll it and you can scroll these buttons too let's go to switch off the enable customize press control and then scroll it so you can scroll it too. sometimes when you have a less space in your monitor and these buttons goes down so you can fix that go to the like find the line the arrows that looks up and down press control and scroll it so you can move it up you can do the same with these uh, brushes materials and alphas press control and scroll down so you can fix the UI The next thing I just wanted to talk about is very little, but I thought this is going to be helpful for someone, and that is solo. And as you know, the solo is the, the button that when you click it, 
it's going to hide everything else. It's going to hide every other, the rest of the subtools except the select one, right? But there is a dynamic title, dynamic text on the top of the solo. And if you press once, it's going to switch on. And what this do is it's not going to do anything when your model is still. But if you press right side button of your mouse and move around, it's going to, you know, makes it solo, but dynamically, not the still, but dynamically. So the next tip is using standard brushes in a curve mode, and that can be standard brush or it can be damp standard, it can be clay buildup, and clay brush, and so on. You can also use in a standard brush with the RGB mode with Z add and Z sub turned off. And I'm gonna show how it's gonna work with the help of damp standard. And as you know, when you have damp standard, it's gonna leave just this kind of track on your model. Now, let's use in a curve mode, which is on a stroke palette, curve sub palette, and switch on curve mode and you can drag on the, the curve line and if you press on the top you're gonna have this kind of line left but as you see there's a, a huge distance between the dots and you can fix that um, for that go to again to stroke and you can go to sub steps and increase it into seven or eight and try it again So depending on the intensity, uh, it can be deeper or shallow. You can also use Alt, drag it again. As you see, this line is, so when you have the line, curve line, you can click on the surface where you're away from the line, where you don't have this kind of blue circle. Just click. And as you see, the, the, the line, the curve is like, it's just a damp standard, but in more controlled, and let's say a better way because you can you can drag the line when you drag the line you can fix the jagged lines because when you drag you're gonna leave some kind of jagged um, line in the curve so you can fix that so as you see this has almost the same depth along the way but you can fix that and make even more interesting pattern and you know, which is located in the curve modifiers size and drag this dot and this dot is the end part of this curve and this one is the beginning click on the middle and rise it up and now if you drag it you're gonna have this kind of pattern which is more deeper in the middle which is the this you can also fix or play around with the pattern or the fall off and you're gonna have this kind of line. You can also have two lines simultaneously, which is again, first line. And if you press Alt when you are not that close, you can drag it again and you can play around. Press Alt or something like that. You can have interesting shapes. And let's, let's see how it's gonna work with the uh, standard brush in RGB mode. Let's try without RGB first. Drag it along this line. Go to stroke, modifiers, size, bring it down, raise it up. Something like that. And let's try without add and just the RGB. Let's change the material on the screen shape four. Fill the object, choose color. Let's drag the line. You click, you're gonna have RGB line without changing the geometry. So you can also use it with RGB. So our next step is using fiber mesh with the help of Morph Target. And for that, just you have the model and you just have to mask out the area where you wanna make the fibers. I think that's fine and go to morph target store morph and try to make some design i think that works and go to switch click once go to fiber mesh preview 
and scroll down and press more target guided and you're gonna have this kind of shape you can fix the gravity and there you go there are lots of other hidden features in zbrush that i don't know but i'll be exploring and trying new things and i hope you to do the same with this amazing software so that's it for today i hope you learned something new if you have any questions please let me know in the comments so good luck and peace out